Hey everyone, welcome back to Baseball Connect. I'm Dan Kaplan and today we're going to be talking about the qualifying offer. The qualifying offer was first introduced to baseball in the 2012 Collective Bargaining Agreement and it was updated in the most recent CBA in 2017. It is a measure that allows clubs to receive draft pick compensation in the scenario that one of their players signs with another baseball team during free agency. The qualifying offer is a one-year contract for the following season at a pay rate equal to the average salary of the league's 125 highest paid players for the current major league season. The qualifying offer amount for the 2020 season was $17.8 million. Clubs can submit a qualifying offer to pending free agents as long as they meet the following two stipulations. Number one, the player has never received a qualifying offer previously. Two, the player was on the roster for the current club for the entire season. Players acquired mid-season are not eligible for a qualifying offer. Once the offer is submitted to the player, he has 10 days to accept or reject the qualifying offer. Should he reject and enter free agency and then go to sign with another club, his former club would receive draft pick compensation. Players can only receive a qualifying offer once during their whole career, regardless of how many teams they end up playing for. An MLB club that has a player reject their qualifying offer to sign with a different major league club will receive draft pick compensation in the following year's amateur draft. Similarly, an MLB club that signs a player who rejected a qualifying offer from their parent team would lose a pick in the upcoming draft. Under the current CBA, there are three tiers for draft pick forfeiture. They are dependent on the signing team's financial status and the value of the player's new contract. Here are the tiers. Number one, a club that exceeded the luxury tax will lose its second and fifth highest draft picks as well as a $1 million from its international signing bonus pool. Tier two, a club that receives revenue sharing will forfeit its third highest draft pick in the following year's draft. If such a club signs two players that rejected qualifying offers, the club would then lose its third and fourth highest draft picks. Tier three, a club that did not exceed the luxury tax and did not receive revenue sharing would forfeit its second highest draft pick and $500,000 from its international signing bonus pool. If such a club signs two players who rejected qualifying offers, it would then forfeit its second and third highest draft picks. Qualifying offer draft pick compensation is also dependent on the financial status of the rejecting player's former club. When a free agent rejects the qualifying offer and signs a subsequent new contract worth more than $50 million and previously played for a club that received revenue sharing, the player's old club will receive a compensatory draft pick following the first round of the following year's MLB draft. If the player receives a contract for less than $50 million, however, such a club would receive a compensatory pick after the competitive balance round B, which follows the second round in the draft. Furthermore, if a player rejects a qualifying offer from a club that is over the luxury tax, that club will receive a compensatory pick following the fourth round of the following year's MLB draft. If a club neither receives revenue sharing nor is over the luxury tax and loses a player who rejects a qualifying offer, that club will receive a compensatory pick after competitive balance round B. When a player rejects a qualifying offer, draft pick compensation only applies up until the MLB draft of the following season. If a player remains unsigned through the completion of the MLB draft, no draft pick compensation would be required to sign them. An example of this is Dallas Keuchel rejected a qualifying offer from the Houston Astros after the 2018 season. He then remained unsigned until June 7, 2019, when the Atlanta Braves agreed to a one-year $13 million contract two days after the conclusion of the 2019 draft. The qualifying offer has benefits for both players and clubs alike. For players, it gives them a high-value one-year contract to cash in on before ideally signing a longer-term contract the following offseason. On the flip side, clubs have the ability to receive draft pick compensation for players they simply cannot afford to pay or don't wish to sign to a long-term contract. The qualifying offer gives clubs security to either bring back players on one-year contracts without the risk of losing them to another club without compensation. Hopefully that information on qualifying offers helps you further understand what teams might be doing during the offseason.